Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to show you uh, how I have repaired and cleaned a couple of uh, Argus C2 and C3 cameras. Uh, this is a C2. Um, it's also a donor camera so and it's missing some parts so when you take yours apart it will not look exactly like this. <clears throat> if you're having trouble with the range finder or the, the shutter speed knob you can get you can access it through the face of the camera you have to take out five screws these have already been removed a lot so all I got to do is pick them out you'll take those out now when you're putting them back in you want to be very careful because you're putting them into Bakelite which is a, an early type of plastic it's very hard but very brittle and it doesn't take much to damage it so you get your screws out as I said you want to set your range range finder to infinity and your shutter speed to just before 300 so I've got 300 here so it's set just a little bit to the left of the indicator mark you're going to need to take off your shutter cocking lever. Now most of the, these all vary a little bit. Uh, this one in this case is screwed on. Like that to get them off you un undo a little set screw back here. You loosen that up, you don't have to take it off. And you unscrew it counterclockwise. Now when you take the face off you want to pick it up a little bit high on the top edge. You want to clear the shutter cocking lever arm. Pick it up a little bit and then slide it forward like that. And what that does is it allows this arm, which works your shutter speed, to slip out from under. I hope you saw that. It slip out from under this little brass strap. When it's assembled, it looks something like that. So, as you're taking the camera apart, you pick it up a little bit and you pick it up and away so you don't break that. Make sure that's back where it's supposed to be. Now, you'll see there's some parts missing. This is just for demonstration purposes. You don't have to take the lens off, not for this portion of it and then if you want to work on and that exposes all the working guts pretty much everything is right here if you want to take off your your range finder mirror setup that's held in there by two screws like this and like this And of course, we're bearing in mind that this is a terrific way to break your camera. And to get this out, you're going to want to hold the sprocket in place and take that screw out. that'll come out and there's supposed to be a little washer on the back side of it that holds tension on it and then you can take your rangefinder assembly assuming it's not stuck which this one is And then it comes out like that. And there's there's your mirrors. Okay, this is this is actually a good one off another camera that I stuck here for demonstration purposes. And when you have this in your hand, oh yeah, don't do that. When you have this in your hand, 
check the mirrors, make sure they're clean and in place. A Q-tip and some Windex is all I've ever used on these. You've got a couple of pivot points, one right here and one right here. They'll get gummy from ancient lubricant. Uh, a little bit of uh, naphtha or alcohol and a Q-tip usually will clean that up. Then you can put a drop, and I mean only a drop, of this is synthetic watch oil. Right there, right there. And that'll make that thing work pretty good again. So you just do it. Little dot of oil like that and a little dot of oil right there and then you work it a little bit and it's going to improve its performance tremendously and when you've got this thing open you'll notice there'll be some lubricant goo this has been cleaned but you'll notice that there will be some lubricant goo uh, here on on the uh, shutter speed control and here on the range finder control these are what will get real stiff and I'm sure there's a way of getting those apart I haven't been brave enough to take that thing apart I've cleaned it as best I can with a q-tip uh, I've put a little bit of solvent in and around the points where it makes contact with the body of the camera and worked it just back and forth um, you can also unscrew the gear that couples the coupling gear for these two you can clean that up and lubricate that uh, there are I think there are videos already on online for how to take this lens apart um, there's a really great website for disassembling these lenses and also a written account of how to take the face off the camera. I'll find that and I'll put that in the show notes also. Uh, and that is everything. Uh, from there, you know, you get in there with a, I use a toothbrush, I sweep out the dirt and, and whatever else collects in there. I use a Q-tip to clean up any lubricant, any old lubricant. There'll be some on the end of, of this arm right here. Uh, clean that off get some some lithium grease a little dab here a little you know a few dabs along here cuz this tiny little point if you can see it that little thing right there that's what presses along here and makes your adjustment that's a a graduated circle starts out low ends up higher um, and this two for the shutter speed has a low spot and as you turn it, it gradually increases pressing on this arm here and there's no works there anymore but you can see how it moves so as as the grade increases on that it pushes down on this arm which pushes this lever here and that should be connected to uh, a mechanical clockwork timer of sorts that controls your shutter speed. I can't show you anything about the shutter because this shutter has already been sacrificed. Um, but really that's that's the bulk of it. I mean there's, there's little things you'll pick up along the way. Reassembly is essentially the same as the disassembly. You gotta get that in there. This is kind of a tight fit for not exactly sure why. You put your screws back in. There is a trick to getting. Okay, hands in the way here. I'm not putting this together for real, so I'm just kind of sticking the screws in there and using them just to hold them in place. When you go to put your film counter back on, a little bit of a trick to that. You got to reach in behind the sprocket. There's a small gear that needs to be pushed back up into place. When you take this off, there's a there's a, a gear behind the sprocket that will drop. It won't fall out, but it will drop. And you have to kind of hold it up with the screwdriver 
to get it threaded back in there. And once you get it threaded back on, then you then you can get you know, hold the sprocket and just give it a little a little snug, a little snuggy thing like that. And that's it, or you'll break it. Um, and when you've got the face off, you can get these these lenses will probably fall out on you right out of the little holes. And there are there are differences. Um, between minor differences between the C2 and C3 and also some production differences over the lifetime of the of the production run um, some models I've seen do not have this brass strap the uh, arm here uh, is allowed to float because of the, there's a minor difference in the casting of the body that allows it to uh, things like that but really this is a very mechanic friendly camera um, there's not a lot to it, it's not very sophisticated uh, I've used one a couple of, on a couple of occasions and the results have been pretty darn good for a camera that is now 